Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the 10-inch Galaxy Tab 3. So we've looked at the 7-inch and the 8-inch. Now it's on to the full-size iPad 2 competitor. So this is the Wi-Fi 16 gig version, which is the base configuration, which starts you off at $399. Now you can get a 32 gig version, and you can get one in white or brown. So there is a brown version out here, just like the rest of the Tab series. Uh, there's a version that also supports... Uh, cellular data and cellular voice. So if you want cellular voice on your tablet, so you can basically place a phone call on your tablet, you could get one of those. Those are usually not sold in the U.S. They're sold internationally. So the Galaxy Tab 3 is interesting for another reason, and that is the fact that this is the first Samsung device to be powered by an Intel Atom processor. So that's an x86 chip powering this device, not an ARM processor like we've seen with every other Galaxy product. So this is a 1.6 gigahertz dual core processor. Uh, we have a three megapixel fixed focus camera, so no autofocusing here. Uh, this is similar to the uh, camera in the seven inch model. Uh, we do have a 1.3 megapixel uh, face, front facing camera for video conferencing. Uh, we have full HD 1080p playback and HD recording, so this does record 720p video. We have a very large 6800 milliamp hour battery, an IR LED blaster for controlling your uh, AV equipment, so that's the same story with the other two Galaxy Tab 3 series. Uh, so this is a 10.1 inch screen WXGA resolution 1280 by 800, so that's good for 149 ppi, which is kind of low. Now another interesting spec here is that this only has one gig of RAM. Now the 8 inch tablet has one and a half gigs of RAM and then the 7 inch tablet also has one gig of RAM which is kind of low. Especially for a tablet running the latest version of Android, Android 4.2 unlike the 7 incher and this also is running the latest version of Touch with, with a lot of other features. So it'll be interesting to see how this performs with only one gig of RAM. We also have DLNA support and we have Dolby Digital Plus so just like the 8 inch model we have enhanced audio thanks to dual speakers and Dolby Digital Pro programming. We have Bluetooth and we have GPS in here so you could use this as a GPS device just like the 8 inch model. So let's go ahead, crack into this and take a look. Alright, so it's going to slice this seal here. We have a little tab here to pull out. And there it is. Of course it's upside down so let's fix that. So there you go, the Galaxy Tab 3 10.1 inch WXGA LCD screen 1.6 gigahertz dual core processor Android OS and the watch on app to control the AV equipment. So let's go ahead and lift this up. There is our very large tablet. And we're going to take a look at that in just a minute. First we want to cover what's inside the packaging. So we have a little box here with all of our accessories. So we have our literature packet. So we have our quick start guide. Only in the Galaxy has its rewards, so we get some rewards with this. Register now, okay, the Watch On app, which we'll explore, and we have our uh, health and safety and warranty guide in multiple languages. We have our micro USB charging cable, bright white, and we have our familiar Sam compact Samsung wall adapter here. Uh, so you can see USB here. Now, of course, with a battery this large, Charging through micro USB can be kind of slow, so that's something to keep in mind. All right, so let's move on to our tablet, which is wrapped in plastic, so you can see on the back, you can see mention of that micro SD card slot right here. If you had one with a SIM, you would see it around here. Uh, so let's go ahead and peel off this plastic. All right, so we have another sheet of plastic on the front, but this time we have a little tab here to help us lift it up. Now on the side, we still have those strips of plastic Samsung is very fond of, so we have to peel these off as well. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the design. And there's some big changes here from the Tab 2. So for example, you can see we have a much smaller bezel on the left-hand and right-hand side in landscape orientation. We used to have built-in speakers here, which are now positioned toward the left and right-hand side. So they've shrunken down the bezel here to give you a little less surface area uh, to a hold on to, uh, which means you now have a little more room here to reach over the screen and use it with your thumb. So that's a little more comfortable, this, uh, this sort of uh, design. Uh, obviously, they mean for it to be used in landscape orientation because they've now included these permanent physical off-screen Android controls, menu, uh, home button, and back button. These are capacitive, uh, so they're kind of easy to tap, especially in portrait mode. That's kind of easy to hit. So they intend for this to be used largely in landscape mode. Uh, and as you can see up here, we have our controls. We have our sleep-wake button, volume rocker, as well as an SD card slot, and we have our IR blaster. To the left side, you'll find the speaker, left, left stereo speaker, and our headphone jack. 
On the other side, we'll find our right speaker. Down here, we'll find our micro USB port as well as the microphone. So that's the only microphone on this tablet. The design overall is, again, very evocative of the other tablets and of all the other 2013 Samsung Galaxy products. We have this sort of faux metal bezel, which is plastic, and we have this glossy back panel. If you look very closely, again, we'll have, you'll see that sort of weave pattern, again, very similar to the Galaxy S4 series. Uh, if you look on the front, you'll see just a smooth white uh, glassy bezel. You won't see that uh, weave pattern here. I'll we'll also find our Samsung branding, our 1.3 megapixel front-facing camera, as well as an ambient light sensor. Now on the back, we have a very flat and smooth panel, as well as a flush-fitting, thankfully, camera. Here's a 3 megapixel fixed-focus camera, a pretty mediocre camera. The Tab 8.0 actually has a better 5 megapixel camera with autofocusing, but at least it's completely flush here. Again, it supports 720p video recording at uh, 30 frames per second. All right, so let's go ahead and power this up for the first time. Just going to reach up here, press and hold that power button. All right, so the first thing I notice here is how much better the speakers sound than the other Tab 3s I just reviewed. So those stereo speakers definitely make a big impact here. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the user interface. Now, this is the stock configuration. This is what you get when you first set up the device. So uh, as you can see, we do have these backlit Android controls, so they are visible at nighttime. Now, the lock screen has quite a few features which are turned off by default, so I want to explore that before I proceed any further. But as you can see here, we go to the lock screen, we can swipe up unlocks it for you, you do get that starburst effect. Uh, if you go to our drop down menu here, which is accessible from the lock screen, so you can see your notification panel here, you can see all these quick settings up here, you can control your brightness, you can set it to auto because we do have an ambient light sensor here. But if we jump to our settings, we can go to lock screen, uh, right here. So under lock screen, we can enable multiple widgets, we can also enable shortcuts, and we can enable something called wake up and lock screen, so we can use our voice to wake up the lock screen. Also in, under shortcuts, if we go to shortcuts, we can actually modify what appears under shortcuts. So for example, I want to remove the standard browser and add Chrome. So Chrome is included by default here. And so we're just going to add that and we're going to reposition it. And there we go. So if we go to our lock screen now, we should have some new features. So we now have lock screen widgets, which is an Android 4.2.2 feature. So as you can see, I've already added Google Now, and I've added my email widget. If I keep swiping here, I can add another widget. We do have some predetermined widgets here, such as Google Plus Posts, Music Player, S Planner, which is their calendar app. Now, unfortunately, what I don't see here is the watch on widget, which you do get with the 8-inch version. So let's go ahead and just add S Planner. So that is now added to the lock screen here. And if you want, you can tap and hold on that and remove it if you prefer. And there we go. And also on that lock screen, we have our apps, which you can swipe up on to activate. Now we can also wake it up with our voice. Hi, Galaxy. And it takes us right to S Voice, which is Samsung's sort of voice assistant. What's the weather like tomorrow in Detroit? You'll hear some thunder on Thursday. Now, if you don't prefer S Voice, you do have Google Now here. So if you tap and hold the menu button, what's the weather like tomorrow in Detroit? Tomorrow's forecast for Detroit is 91 degrees and clear. Now, just to go over our Android controls here, you can tap and hold the home button to get to the app switcher. So you can see this works in landscape or portrait orientation. Basically, you can swipe up to uh, close those apps. You can also close all by tapping this control here, and you can go to your task manager. Task manager allows you to control things like uh, what apps are downloaded, your RAM manager here. So right now I'm pretty much maxed out here, almost to one gig. If I clear memory, it will close the apps in the background. You can see five applications closed. Now if we go to storage, you can see how much I'm using right now. So I'm using 5.79 gigs out of that 16 gigs. And we see our help document. Now as you can see, this works in both landscape and portrait orientation. Everything uh, reorganizes for that orientation, including the size of the widgets here. Uh, now we have three home screens by default here. You can use this little slider here to slide between them or you can tap on any one of them. And of course you can add more. You can pinch out like this to see all of your home screens. You can add more home screens or you can remove them or rearrange them. Go back to our home screen. You can see they pretty much focus on just one home screen and put all their highlighted apps right here. So you have the Google widget here, which is very helpful. It takes you right to Google now. 
or you have your widgets here up here for weather and clock as well as your briefing widget up here which basically integrates both your calendar events as well as your news events. Chat on is a cross-platform chat app which Samsung employs. We have group play which allows you to connect to other Samsung devices in close proximity to each other. I've demonstrated that previously. Basically allows you to share music, photos, and gaming across devices. You have the manual, the Peel Smart Remote which basically allows you to use the IR blaster to control your AV equipment. Dropbox, there is a Dropbox integration by default here so when you set up your device you log into your Dropbox account or you create one and you can uh, store your documents in the cloud. Polaris Office, which is the Office Suite, Samsung's App Store, the Google Play Store, our contacts, S Plan, which is our calendar, our email, and we also have the Samsung Android browser. Uh, we have YouTube, the Google Maps, and settings. If we go to our app drawers, we'll find more here. Uh, so we'll find Paper Artist, which is an app we're familiar with on the Note series, such as the uh, Note 8.0 and the Galaxy uh, Note 10.0. We have uh, screensavers, lots of Google apps, Flipboard, uh, the, the music player, as well as Music Hub and Music Player, which are Samsung apps. Uh, we'll find our watch on app as well as the video player which has that pop out feature as well as the world clock and YouTube. Wow, those are already on the home screen and we have our widgets. So we have lots of widgets now. Just like the home screen you can pinch in and out to see them. Tap on them to get to them. Same with widgets here. So you can see the performance is pretty good here. Now of course you can modify any one of these just by tapping them and as you can see you get a little preview down here so you can drag and drop them using this little sort of uh, manager down here uh, that appears when you go to edit any of your uh, uh, apps. So you can remove it and you can go to the app drawer and grab something else like Chrome. As you can see you also get that preview down here but I just want to drop it down into my lower third here and there we go. So now I have my Chrome browser. All right, so let's go and take a look at our settings up here. So we have Wi-Fi, GPS, sound screen, lock, rotation, Bluetooth, blocking mode, power saving, driving mode, smart stay, sync, and airplane mode. That's all you get. Basically fills up the entire screen when you're in uh, uh, landscape orientation. Now, if you want to modify any of these, just tap and hold on them. It takes you right to the settings panel. So from here, you can en enable blocking mode. Uh, blocking mode is particularly useful because it turns off notifications. Uh, so you can either set it to always, so it'll always block notifications, or you can set it for a specific time of day. So for example, if you want notifications to automatically stop at nighttime, you can do that so it doesn't wake you up at night. You can select specific times. Now we do have smart state technology, so the camera is watching for the presence of your eyes, and if it detects them, it will prevent the screen from going to sleep. We also have syncing mode and airplane. Airplane mode obviously will turn off all of your antennas. Now there are a few things absent on the 10 inch model, which the eight inch model has, such as reading mode, reading mode, basically adjusts the screen brightness and coloring for optimal reading conditions that works with only certain apps like the Google Books app. We also have screen mirroring, not available on the 10 inch, but available on the 8 inch. And we have multi windowing mode, uh, which unfortunately is not available on the 10 inch where it's very useful. But that's probably a limitation of that one gig of RAM here. So it may not even be possible with the tablet only running one gig. This is running 1.5 gig. So unfortunately, that is uh, omission that I'm surprised to see here. You do get it on the Galaxy Tab Note 10.1. Uh, I'm surprised it's not available here. Uh, so just to show you what that is, basically if you tap and hold the menu button, you do get your uh, multiple window panel here. You can drop one app here and open up another app at the same time. So you have a dual screen view. Unfortunately, that is not here. Now the keyboard is very similar to the 8-inch tablet. So if you tap and hold the settings button here, you can jump to your split keyboard, which is particularly useful for a wide tablet like this. So you have your thumb keyboard and you can move it around and reposition it. You can tap and hold on that and get back to the floating keyboard here. So the floating keyboard allows you to reposition this keyboard on any part of the screen and if you just want to use one thumb to type you can do that. And of course this all works in portrait mode as well. You can jump back to your full size keyboard. You also have your handwriting keyboard with text recognition or handwriting recognition. So you can basically use your finger or a stylus to write in here. And this is very similar to the Note series which also offers this keyboard. We also have our spoken keyboard. Hello, this is Mike from Rochester Hills, Michigan, period. And that works pretty well and pretty quickly. We also have our swipe keyboard. If you go to settings here, it's actually turned on by default, but there you go. That's the toggle for turning it on. So if you go back to our keyboard, we can now swipe without uh, lifting our finger off the keyboard. There you go, works pretty well. 
But because we're dealing with a fairly low spec, three megapixel fixed focus lens camera, we do not have the newer camera interface like you get with the Galaxy S4 or the eight inch version of this tablet. So you have all of your settings over here, including your exposure, your filters, your timer. You can go to settings here to get to more things here. So you can see resolution, white balance, metering, guidelines. So a full featured app nonetheless, but it is their older app. Uh, you can toggle between camera mode and video mode. You can take some photos here. Now you can see we do not have tap to focus. There's no auto focusing obviously, and there's no tap to exposure. This automatically adjusts exposure. Uh, uh, depending on where you're pointing the camera. So you can see adjust the exposure. You can toggle to your video mode, swiping here. So we can record video, uh, and then we can pause it and stop it. As you can see, you cannot take photos while recording video like you can with some other Samsung tablets. Now audio is definitely one of this tablet's strong suits. So again, we have these stereo speakers which are side firing. So they do have a good depth of sound here with Dolby digital processing. So you do get a stereo-like effect. Kind of sounds like it feels all the all around the tablet, uh, and as you can see, it's ideally positioned in this setting. Uh, you can watch video in the opposite orientation here, but you are blocking the speakers if you're holding it this way. Now, in terms of this display, again, we have a pixel density of 149 ppi, and it's definitely not as sharp as you're used to with something like iPad Retina display or the Nexus 10, which even has a higher resolution than the Retina display. So, again, this is 149 ppi, definitely not up there. Now, I have to say, because the screen is so large, it really isn't a problem when reading text. This text looks pretty sharp. It only gets a problem when you're looking at really small text. Uh, but as you can see, a standard web page with standard text looks pretty good. No complaints here. The screen is bright and vivid, uh, bright colors, excellent off-axis viewing. The screen is laminated to the glass, so there is no light refraction. So overall, the screen looks pretty good despite its lower specs. Now in terms of our benchmarks, we actually do extremely well here, better than I expected. Again, we're running that dual core 1.6 gigahertz Intel Atom processor, so we score about 20,600, which is much better than the 8 inch version, which does about 8,500, and the 7 inch, which only does about 7,000. Now, if you compare this to the Nexus 10 here, it also bests the Nexus 10, which scores about 13,717. Now, you have to remember that something like the Nexus 10 is also pushing far more pixels. This is a much higher resolution display than what we have over here, so you have to keep that in mind. So, we're doing pretty well here on the 10 inch tablet. Now, in conclusion, there's a lot to like about the Tab 3 10 inch model. I like the form factor, the thin, lightweight design with the side firing speaker with excellent stereo sound makes this one of the better media tablets. You still get a very high quality screen even though it's not higher resolution. Certainly if you're used to something like the Retina iPad or the Nexus 10, going back to this will be noticeable. But if you're if you haven't really referenced yourself on those devices, I don't think you'll find the problem with this screen. It's colorful and vivid and bright. The tablet software is Faster than I expected, but it is laggy. You will experience lag when launching apps, but it's not as bad as something like the 7-inch tablet. Uh, definitely not as good as like the 8-inch tablet, but it gets the job done, and I don't think most people will have a problem with it. So performance is pretty good. And overall, I really like the smaller bezel along the side, but I don't really like the positioning of these Android controls here along the portrait side of the device. So if you're using it in portrait mode, it's pretty easy to accidentally hit these buttons. That's complicated by the fact that the touch targets are actually pretty big big for these buttons. So for example, if I touch all the way out here, you can see I'm tapping the back button. So it's pretty easy to accidentally hit the back button while reading something in a document, reading a website, or uh, looking at the book. So that can get pretty frustrating, so you have to be mindful of that. Same with, with the menu button out here. You can see you can go all the way to the home button and uh, activate the menu button. Now for me, the biggest issue here is pricing. So at $399, you can get the Nexus 10. So the Nexus 10 gives you a much higher resolution display that actually bests the iPad Retina display. Uh, you also get front firing stereo speakers, which are harder to block because uh, they run the entire width of the edge of the device, so you can't block them with your fingers. You also get much better front facing camera, 720p camera versus a VGA camera. And on the back, you get an eight megapixel camera with an LED flash. This is a cover, by the way. Uh, and you get the latest version of Android. So Android 4.3 is about to come out. While we can expect this to get it, the Tab series probably won't get it. And if it does, it'll take a while to get here. So that's something to consider. You also have your on-screen Android controls, which mean that if you hold it in portrait mode, you don't accidentally hit those buttons. And of course, as you can see, if you rotate to portrait mode, the uh, positions change. For a lot of people, 
they don't prefer that, they don't like that. It's something that I'm used to, so it's okay for me. Uh, but for a lot of people, they prefer a fixed home button, which I actually like. I do like the physical home button on the lock screen as opposed, or on the front of the device as opposed to this tiny little uh, sleep wake button up top. Now TouchWiz does offer some features which are valuable, some features that the Nexus 10 can offer such as an IR blaster for controlling your AV equipment, blocking mode for turning off notifications on the schedule, as well as smart state technology for preventing the screen from going to sleep. But there are a lot of TouchWiz features not available here which I think should be. Uh, such as multi-windowing mode. That's a big feature here which makes uh, Samsung tablets stand out above something like a stock Android user experience. So unfortunately, that is gone here which makes this less of a standout product compared to something like the 8-inch tablet. Now the Tab's biggest competitor is the iPad, specifically the iPad 2. Now the version I have here is the iPad with Retina display, which is $100 more. The iPad 2 has the same price tag and similar screen specs, but overall the, they're the same packaging and design. Uh, as the iPad with Retina display. So as you can see, the screen aspect ratio is quite a bit different between the Tab 3 and the iPad. So if you stack them on top of each other, you can see that the iPad is wider in portrait mode and shorter in landscape orientation. So landscape orientation, you can see that the Tab is quite a bit taller. So this is more 16 by 10, this is four by three. So as you can see, it's also geared toward landscape orientation. They place the home button here in landscape orientation versus the portrait orientation for the iPad. So that's something to keep in mind. All right guys, so you've seen me review the seven inch, eight inch and 10 inch model. So what I wanna know from you guys is which one would you choose? So for me, I probably would go with the eight inch model because of the form factor. I really like this smaller design. It's mostly all screen, so you have a smaller bezel along the side and it's comfortable. So it's wide enough in portrait mode for typing and it's not too wide in landscape mode for typing. And it's more portable, it's very lightweight and thin, you get a better camera, five megapixel autofocusing, and you get a lot of features here that the other tablets don't offer. Again, these are three megapixel fixed focus lenses. You also get this multi-windowing mode, so you can bring up a browser here, and then you can drop in anything you want, such as Gmail. So you can work in both portrait or landscape mode. So definitely a big feature here, definitely a standout feature for Samsung products, and I'm surprised that something like the 10 inch does not have. So for me, I think the eight inch tablet is the one to get, but I'm sure there's a case for all of these tablets for any specific type of years. So I'm very curious what you guys think, which one would you choose and why? So that's gonna do for me in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.